Restaurant Unstoppable. Inspire, empower, and transform the industry. I don't think anybody would classify what I had was a failure. It was just, it didn't, it's not what I'm doing right now with the level of success. So um, I had a marketing company where I just kind of worked out of my house. I ended up growing and bringing on bigger clients. From doing that, I ended up starting a nonprofit, which was an event-based nonprofit um, about educating parents um, about the importance of setting. That's another huge skill set, events, right? Sorry to yeah. interrupt, but like yeah. all these little nuggets are going to serve you later in life. So these, when you do, we're doing your branding in your, in your graphic design and then that evolved into digital marketing, were these your businesses? Or were yes. you working for, oh, these were your businesses? Yeah, I these thought. were my businesses. Okay, okay. Yeah. So um, let's start pulling back the layers. You said you started first with just uh, the visual aesthetic graphic design branding uh people who are listening to this podcast right now who have to develop a brand like what were some of the big lessons you learned in in that element with with developing a brand i mean it's really um so when i would try to create a brand it's such a simple basic concept it's connecting your product with the consumer so it's understanding your product and how that product connects with the end person who whether it's a business whether it's somebody a customer coming into a restaurant whether it's somebody buying a product at a store it's understanding how the company that you're creating connects with that consumer and clearly concisely communicating that so when we're developing a logo or a design like what's the first step for for me, it's thinking about the colors, thinking about the emotion. So also, I was a big, big believer in emotional branding. So how that product emotionally connects with that consumer. Um, Coca Cola was a really big founder in creating those campaigns back in you know the um, late seventies, and you know people smiling and drinking stuff and uh, doing things that were emotionally based. You know, sharing a Coke together. So when you're creating a brand, even though it's a logo, that logo has to emulate and like, um, like reflect everything that's a part of that brand. Why is emotional branding so important? Or why, like, what is happening with emotional branding that makes it? Well, now it's, it's so evolved even more. So now you're looking at social media and social media is like based on pictures, not just like words and, you know, things that you hear over the radio. It's about visually seeing the emotion that, you know, ties you into wanting to have that product. Mm. Um, so when you're we're creating a, a brand, you said you, you start with the colors and, the, and you try to like what how do colors evoke emotion? I mean, there's all this, you know, if you take classes or, you know, like there's color theory. So like the, you know, for me, like my brand is about healthy. And so naturally green and organic colors and everything that has to do with, you know, organic natural things would tie into that brand, at least to me. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, you know, there's a lot of color theory back then, you know, behind like restaurants, yeah. red and yellow and that inducing, you know, you wanting to eat and making you hungry you're reminding me that i've been wanting to do a whole episode dedicated to the meaning like the the emotions that colors communicate so there's a reason like I, my colors restaurant stoppable logo green and blue mm -hmm. and i chose those colors because green like you said uh healthy wealthy but green for money too mm -hmm. and then blue um also that communicates loyalty trust and like those are i mean that's what i'm trying to say we're here to 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 gain your trust, we're here to mm -hmm. to be loyal to you, and we're here to kind of put you on a path of wealth and in, in health, mm -hmm. in mental health, emotional health, financial health, right? Correct. So these little things make a big difference. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so what about, do you need to think about who you're, so you, you said you got to think about colors, but also I'm, I'm assuming target market must, you got to start there too, right? Like who, who am I trying to communicate to? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the first thing yeah. is like you figure out who your key target, aud aud target audience is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So how did we evolve into, you know, visually branding and design to more digital? How did that evolution ha happen? So it was interesting. Um, I got pulled into a project. I, I can't even remember how I found the project. I think it was online. I think it was like a posting on Craigslist or something random um, about a project that was about aggregating all the information and things to do for parents in a local 
like city. So I lived in Columbus, Ohio. So at that time, this was um, 97, I believe, um, when I got involved in this project, there was really nowhere where you could go um, like in a city and find out the classes to do with the kids or the sporting programs or anything like that. So I got in at the very ground floor and my job was to figure out how to let the parents in that city know that this website existed. This is back in 97. This is like before, this is like before MailChimp and everything really existed, constant contact. They were there, but it was, they didn't have the tools that are now integrated into those um, email marketing programs. Where was email marketing at that time? Because I, I mean, I didn't even really start to learn about email marketing until like, 2010 for me of 2012 when I started like learning about entrepreneurs. Yeah. I mean, it was archaic. It was, you know, very clunky. You pretty much had to like aggregate your lists all on your own. There was not like the pop-ups to, you know, collect data, you know, that you get now that are now integrated into MailChimp or into websites. So you had to be very creative and trying to figure out how to get that person to give you, you know, their email address and then strategically get back in front of them to you know, think about how they conduct their day-to-day -day life, or what they're doing, and how you know when they would be looking for this information to get the highest return on investment in your time, your energy, your money. Mm -hmm.